Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me in a new video. So before I start, um, I'm sorry for my voice. I am kind of a little bit ill and my voice is starting to go away. So I'm sorry if it sounds a bit scruffy. I'm going to do my best to talk you through this um, 35 minute or 30 minute tutorial. And um, I hope it isn't too distracting. So. In this video, I wanted to do the ultimate fur tutorial in colored pencil video. So this is a video that I recorded for my Patreon in real time. So if you want to see all these fur types demonstrated in real time, that's about nine hours long, you can go over to my Patreon. Thank you so much to my patrons for enabling me to uh, do these videos. And for YouTube, I wanted to do a little bit of a shorter video i didn't want to make it any shorter than this otherwise it would be way too fast so i hope this is um just long enough for you to uh, to see what i'm doing and i'm going to talk you through it so i hope you'll enjoy it so um for this video i'll be using my faber castell polychromos my carandage luminance and I have an A3 size Canson 1557 paper, 180 grams. I am using an embossing tool, my Tamba Mono Zero eraser, a very um, basic sharpener, and a white Sakura jelly roll pen at the end. So that's all the materials I'm using. So I'm going to start off with the first one. This is the side of a black Labrador's face. So um, that's the first one I chose. The top four fur types are more common, more regular fur types that you see a lot in pet portraits. And the bottom four ty uh, fur types are wildlife, a bit less common and a bit trickier. And you'll also see all the reference photos on screen. Um, these are all royalty free photos or photos that I took myself. So you can just follow these tutorials along if you want to without any problem. So I'm starting out with the Labrador's face. I um, choose my colors before I start. So what I do when building up black fur, I start by mapping out the direction of the fur growth. So here I have a lighter cold gray um, in, the, in this fur. As you can see on the reference, you can see a lot of blue, a lot of cooler tones. So that's why I start with mapping out the fur direction with a cool tone as well. And what I do with that, I just lightly sketch out all the um, different shapes that I see in the fur. You can see a lot of muscles, a lot of bones, which cast shadows. And I sketch those out. And then when I'm done when the, with the first layer, I go over with a darker color. This is uh, a paint gray. And with that, I am darkening up the shadows first. So I want to make sure that I've um, put in the dark areas first. So then I can judge the lighter areas based on the darkness of those darker areas. And that will pre prevent me from going too dark on the lighter areas. So I just go on top of, of the first layer and I sketch in all those hairs. So as you can see this fur is very very short which means that I'm going to draw very light strokes, very short strokes. And it's also important to keep your pencils very sharp. So what I'm doing is I leave open very tiny spaces in between the strokes. So I'm not coloring in the whole area with one solid color. I'm just drawing strokes, leaving open tiny areas in between them. And that will create the fur texture. And of course I will be adding lots of other colors on top as well. But even with the first layers, I want to make sure that I get in that fur texture right away. Now 
Now, as you can see in the reference, it's you can see a lot of blue. So I'm going to add some blue. This is a cobalt blue. And with that, I'm going to lightly glaze on top of all the hairs I just put in. I want to start pretty light, so I'll be building up my layers from light to dark. That prevents me from going too vibrant and too dark right away, because that is very difficult to correct. So I'm just being very careful, and if I need to add more, I can always add more. So you could also see me going in with Kaput Morton Violet. That's a really lovely violet color that I always use in black fur. You can see some tiny violety areas on a reference photo as well. And I like to add a violet to contrast the blue. So if something looks too blue, I like to go over it with a bit of violet to balance that out. So right now I'm switching between violet and blue and violet and blue, building up these layers. And then I'm going in with black. So I use the black polychromos. I'll be using my Karen Dice Luminance black as well, because that's a little bit more, more black. Darker, deeper black than the polychromos is. And with the black polychromos, I darkened up those dark shadows you can see in the fur. That Those are the shadows that are cast by the bones and the muscles underneath the fur. So when you're drawing an animal, it's super important to understand the bone structure. Tru the bone structure. So you can more easily uh, draw the right textures and the right shapes if you don't understand what you're drawing. It's way more difficult to draw it right. So I took my white Carondage Luminance and with that I like to blend. So I go over the whole area with the white Carondage and um, so, so with that I can blend the colors together and get rid of that paper texture a bit more. But I don't push too hard for the first time. So then I will still be able to add more layers on top. So now you can see me pick the black Carondage Luminance. And with that I can pretty easily layer on top of the white. I find the, the luminances, the luminance, a bit more easy when it comes to layering. So they are a bit waxier and a bit more smooth, a bit softer, which makes them pretty easy for layering. So I still work with uh, drawing those tiny strokes in the right direction. And I kept just building up these layers, adding blue, adding violet, adding more blue, until I got the color that I wanted. As this is a part of the dog's face, there's always there's also a bit of the muzzle in the picture and some whiskers. Those whiskers I have indented before I started with the embossing tool. And now you can see those appear. Now I am uh, starting to shade in the muzzle as well. And I hope this is not going too fast for you. I had to speed it up. To make it um, to make it suitable for YouTube, and that was the first fur type. So the second fur type is white cat fur, and this is a piece of the chest that I chose, and you can also see the color in the middle, and uh, the white fur is overlapping the color mostly, which is also pretty interesting. So that's why I chose it. And I'm starting out with mapping out the fur direction, just like I did with the first one. In this type of fur, you can see a lot of warm shades. You can see a bit of yellow, a bit of warm brown. So that's really important to put in. White fur is never white. So for mapping out the direction of the fur, I took a light warm gray. 
So I just drew tiny strokes, or a bit longer strokes actually. This first longer, so I'm using longer strokes to map out the shapes I see. I also put in the color, or the little bit you can see of it, with a darker gray. And then I took a darker warm gray to build up the shadows in the fur. Right now you can actually see me use dark sepia, which is a very dark gray, but a warm dark gray, which is leaning a bit towards brown. And with the dark sepia, I put in the darkest shadows. So I'm not drawing the hairs, I'm drawing the shadows in between the hairs. And now I keep on building up the shadows with the dark warm grays. Also adding some more detail in the color. And that was the white fur. So the white fur took me a lot less long than the black fur because you don't have to add that many layers. And then it was time to move on to the th third fur type, which is long brown fur. This brown fur has a lot of different colors in it, as you can see on the reference. This is a part of a German Shepherd's um, neck chest area uh, towards the shoulder. And it's very long frizzy fur. So I always start out the same. I start out by mapping out the direction of the fur. So I did that with Burnt Sienna. And after mapping out the direction of the fur, I could start building up the darkness, the values in the fur. But it's always nice to uh, start out by just getting everything right for yourself. So just uh, sketching out all the different shapes that you see and just work in sections. Always have a plan before you start drawing such a complicated thing with the colored pencils. Because with, with colored pencils it's quite difficult to correct anything if you go too dark. So working with colored pencils really teaches you to make plans before you start. So for the darker areas in the fur I use walnut brown, burnt umber, then a bit of Payne's Grey for the more greyish areas that you can see. But if an area gets too brown, I like to contrast it by using pinks. So I also used cinnamon and sanguine for the more pinkish areas in the fur. You can see me using the sanguine now. Keep looking at your reference photo all the time to see if you're still going in the right direction. And I just keep on building up the layers very carefully. So it looks like I'm drawing these fur types really fast, but actually I'm, I spent about one to two hours on each fur type. So I'm actually doing this very slowly and very carefully, although it might not seem like it. So for that lighter area in the right bottom section, I used Burnt Sienna first to map out the darker shadows in that hair. And then I also used Ivory, which is a um, light yellow beige color and raw umber 10% from Carandash Luminance, which is also a beige, but it, um, it sticks to the paper a bit better because it's wax based. And then I kept on building up the layers by using some uh, pink, some cinnamon, and um, adding the final details to the rest of the fur. And then that one was finished as well. 
So I wasn't going for photorealism here. I wanted to uh, show how I built up these specific fur types and to get a similar, um, similar result to the photo reference. Now, the fourth fur type is a much requested one. It's orange tabby cat fur. A lot of people ha are having trouble with this type of fur and uh, picking the right colors for it, so I needed to put that one in. I uh, indented the whiskers that you can see with the embossing tool and then I started building up the fur. So what I did first is sketching out all the different markings that you can see, the dark markings. I sketched that out with burnt sienna and burnt umber, which is a darker brown. And then when you have those in, it becomes way easier to find the right colors for the rest of the fur as well. So I like to put in the darkest areas first and then base the darkness of the rest of the fur on those dark areas. So I keep comparing the darkness um, of the fur to other areas in the fur. I just keep comparing and looking and comparing and looking to get the right results. So I used quite a limited color palette for this fur type. I used burnt ochre, burnt umber, terracotta, a bit of sanguine and burnt sienna. And that's basically it. Oh, a bit of ivory too. And a little bit of pink as well. So if an area gets too orange, I like to glaze some cinnamon, some pink on top of it to balance that out a bit more. But as you can see on the reference, this fur is so orange. Actually, I could have made it a bit more orangey. For this fur type, it's super important to work with sharp pencils. I am basically drawing strokes, just drawing lines all the time. I make sure to draw them in the right direction. Um, the further towards the top of the head you get, the more straight upwards the hairs grow. This cat has its head a bit tilted, which means that um, the hairs are growing a bit towards the left as well. But it's, that's just because the way uh, the cat is holding its head on the photo. So that's also a really fun, um, really fun exercise. So this is basically the part above the eyes and in between the ears. So I do this building up of the fur very slowly. I spend about one hour on this piece of fur and it's so important to, uh, to do this very carefully. And I just kept switching between the terracotta and the burnt ochre mostly for the lighter fur and I just drew all those tiny hairs, tiny lines in the right direction and kept building it up that way. So it's very important to not rush this and to not um, color in solid parts but just work by drawing tiny lines. And then that fur type was finished as well. Now it's time to move on to the bottom four uh, fur types, which are my favorites of this tutorial. And I'm starting out with sea lion fur. So this is a wet sea lion fur. This is a part from the neck where you can see a very obvious highlight. That is because uh, the fur is wet. So very tricky to draw as well. And I started out by filling in the areas around the highlight first. So I started out by drawing the, the normal fur that made it uh, that made the rest so much easier. So I started out with, with building up the colors using burnt sienna, brown ochre, um, walnut brown and burnt umber. A bit of pink as well. And I didn't really draw hairs in this one. Um, the fur is so short, 
so I just um, I just colored the whole area in and then to get everything extra smooth I picked my luminance my white luminance and I burnished the whole fur area so by burnishing you push the colors into the paper and with that you get rid of the texture of the paper but it also flattens out flattens out the colors it lightens them so after that i went over again with all my colors mostly brown ochre and bister a bit of walnut brown as well to darken up the whole area i also made sure to draw around those lighter bumps you can see in the fur I think those are veins or just uh, just just bumps so I left those a bit lighter and I drew around them now for the highlights I made sure to get the shape right first and I left that whole shape open and then it was time to start adding some base colors so there are loads of different colors in that area um, I could see pinks blues grays and browns as well so I started out with a light base layer of warm gray and there's also a very tiny um, a very bright highlight as well there below on the bottom area so I left that open completely and I started building up the colors so I added some blue some dark indigo blue on the middle section where you can see a little bit more of a bluish hue and then on the rest I used um, Kaput Morton Violet to get in that violety hue that you can see in this area the burnishing was super important so when I got enough layers down of the grays, the, the blues and the purple I burnished the whole area and then it was time to get in the right transition between the fur the normal fur and the highlight so I took my browns a walnut brown burnt umber Van Dyke brown also and I started cleaning up the edges around the highlight because that's such an important part of this fur type of this little fur sample you have to get in the right contrast the contrast and the transition the transitions between colors is what's going to make this um, this fur look realistic my voice is really starting to go away now I'm so sorry I'm trying to do my best to keep it um, sounding all right all right so i just kept on layering added more kaput morton violet more blue now i'm really focusing on the details so i start out with the basic shapes basic colors and then work my way towards the details And if you want to see a more in-depth video on one of these fur types, let me know. I can understand if this, if this one is a little bit fast. So if you want to see a specific texture or fur type within more detail, let me know. And after the final details on the sea lion fur, I moved on with the Bernese mountain dog fur. So this fur has three colors in it, white, orange or brown, and black. And the fur itself is quite wavy, and a bit messy, and really fun to draw as well. So I started out with mapping out the fur direction using a lighter cold gray. And then I went in with some paints gray to get in that blue hue you can see. You can see a little bit of blue in the black fur. And then after that I started adding black for this is really important to keep looking at the reference to see in which direction the hairs are going all right so after adding some layers of black I mostly focused on the darkest areas in the fur I decided to go in with the white carnage luminance and burnish 
so I burnished all the colors together to smooth out the colors, get rid of the paper texture and um, that creates a bit of that softer fur texture. So after burnishing I lightened up the fur too much so I went back in with black also with paints gray, a bit of dark indigo and a bit of kaput morton violet to add some more color into the fur. And for the very, very darkest parts in the fur, I used the black Caran d'Ache instead of the black Polychromos. Alright, so after doing the fur, I filled in the eyebrows. These are not real eyebrows, of course, but they look like eyebrows. And uh, for that, I used um, raw umber 10%, brown ochre, a bit of burnt ochre, burnt sienna, and a little bit of terracotta. So I built up the layers from light to dark, burnished a bit, and then uh, went back in with the darker colors and separate the hairs a bit more. And after filling in the eyebrows, I went in and uh, filled in the white part of the fur. And I also cleaned up the edges a bit more. So a white is never white. Um, the fur here seems very white, but I also used a bit of blue in it and cold grays and a bit of darker gray to separate the hairs um, at the top a bit more to put in some darker shadows. And that was basically it for that fur type. And then it was time to move on to the seventh fur type, which is a giraffe fur. And I chose this because it is very particular, it's very short. It has those markings in it, which are tricky to draw. Um, I took this photo at the zoo recently, so um, I figured to put it in. So this is a part of the neck. So the transition from the neck into the shoulder, you can see quite a lot of shadows in it and a lot of different colors. So just like with the other fur types, I started out by sketching out the direction of the fur with very light colors and I sketched out the markings. So it's very important to get the markings in the right place. So I made sure to sketch out the shapes of those first using uh, raw umber 10% from Caran d'Ache and some light grays and a bit of nougat. So after sketching out the markings, I filled them in with nougat just to give them a base layer. Then I went on with drawing in the lighter fur around the markings and um, what I did was not draw the individual hairs but to draw the shadows in between the hairs and I did that with cool grays and some paints gray for the very dark shadows in between the fur in between the hairs and then I could start uh, darkening up the markings as well So I darkened up the markings using cinnamon, walnut, brown, a bit of burnt umber and brown ochre. So you can see some pink in the markings, also some yellow. So that's why I use both the cinnamon and the brown ochre. Those are a pink color and a yellow color. And I just layer those on top of each other to get the right color in. And after darkening up the markings, it became a lot easier as well to decide how, how dark the light fur could be. So then I, um, I realized that I could darken up the fur a lot more. So I started using dark, dark sepia to add in more shadow in between the dark, in between the light hairs. So I drew all those tiny strokes from top to bottom, making sure to draw them in the right direction to follow the structure of the shoulder of the giraffe. I focused mostly on the areas that were a bit more in shadow, which were the top area and a bit of the bottom as well. I kept the middle, the center area quite light. Then I decided to burnish 
to burnish the dark marking on the left. You can see that the shape of it is not completely the same. I wasn't completely happy with it, so I adjusted it a little bit by um, uh, erasing some of it with a uh, kneaded eraser. And then I decided I liked it more. So I added in the final details, darkened some areas up a bit more. And then it was time to move on to the final fur type which is lemur fur. So I took this picture at the zoo as well. This is a part of the head of the lemur. You can see a bit of the white fur above the eyes and then it transitions to that dark fur with those um, light tips, which is very, um, very tricky to draw. So for that, I would, re I would recommend an embossing tool. So what I did is I indented all those white hairs with the embossing tool. That saves you a lot of time. So um, I just drew all those hairs in. Basically you indent the paper. So if you go over it with a darker color, those areas stay white. So you can see when I went over with cold grays, I used cold grays because I could see a cool hue in the fur instead of a warm hue. So I went over with cool grays and you could see all these white hairs appear automatically. And that saved me so much time. I kept the top area pretty light and for the bottom area I used paint gray to darken it up a bit more. And after that I went in with black. With the black, I am working in between the light hairs. I don't want to accidentally darken up um, a white hair. So with, with a sharp pencil, I went in between those um, lighter hairs to darken up the areas that needed to be darkened up a lot more. And I also glazed some Kaput Mortem Violet on top of the whole area to give it a bit of a purple hue. You can see that on the reference photo as well. Just lightly add that on top. And then you can change the color of the fur a little bit. And then finally for the bottom section, which was the white fur, I um, added a base color of light gray. And then with a white Sakura Jelly Roll pen, I added some of those flyaway hairs that overlap the dark hair. All right, so after adding in the final details, all these fur types were done. Make sure to, s to take a lot of time for doing these because they do take a lot of time. And they took me about nine to 10 hours in total, but it's a really good exercise. And I feel like if you can do all these well, you can, you can do every fur type well. I left out the curly fur. I did a separate tutorial on curly fur in another Patreon tutorial, so I will be uploading that one here on YouTube as well in the future. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see one of these more in depth, have a look on my Patreon, it's all there. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you in the next tutorial.